Inverse physics informed neural networks is a type of neural networks that uses physics to predict a specific parameter. So what is IPINS and how it works? The first thing is, what is IPINS? IPINS is basically a neural network that can be used to predict a specific parameter with the help of physics and the necessity. It's very important that it has a data. For example, if we have Berger's equation, as we can see here, this is Berger's equation. It's there is a parameter, let's call it u, that changed with t, and it is u multiplied by the first derivative of u with dx, and it will equals this parameter, which is referred to the viscosity parameter, related with uh, or multiplied by the change of u in respect to the spatial uh, coordinate. This is the second derivative of u with respect to dx. So if we have a data or if we have the solution of this Berger's equations in this input data, and we would like to predict what is the parameter v, this one, the viscosity parameter, that caused this data to happen. We only have the data, which is kind of the result of this equation, plus we also have the equation itself, but we don't have this v, we don't have the viscosity form, or the, we don't have the viscosity parameter. So how can we predict this viscosity? Well, we applied inverse physics-informed neural network. So what is the application of such thing? Let's try to understand why we want to predict these parameters before we, of course, go into how it works. The first thing is, or the, the very strong application of uh, inverse uh, pins is uh, basically predicting the pressure gradient of uh, the result of PIV. So PIV is a particle image uh, velocimetry, and it is basically after experiment we can actually see the, uh, how these particles uh, move and then we can predict or we can have a solution that um, or, or, or like a, a distribution of velocities uh, because these particles will measure basically the, the, the speed of the, velo of the flow at that location. So the pins uh, or the pins can help us in if we transfer this um, these uh, particles velocities uh, field into data so I'm a little bit or just this one basically I'm, I'm, I'm hiding it this data we can take this data and we go to the inverse pins and we predict the viscosity if we predict viscosity of course depending on the equation itself if we predict the viscosity related with that fluid we can basically solve the whole CFD problem. We can then use any model we want. We can use a CFD or we can use pins, not inverse pins, but pins. And then we, pre we can predict the pressure of this um, flow field. This is one very uh, direct application of inverse pins. And it's I find it very useful and in... Uh, this course what we will do also we will uh, get velocity field and then we uh, will uh, basically do this thing and we predict the viscosity so it's it's very uh, important thing or interesting thing to us to in, to to think about now the thing is for inverse pins um, network how does it work like do we need really something called inverse pins network the reality is we don't. What we need is we will take the pins network and we simply change it a bit. What do I mean by change it a bit? The first thing what we need to do is because this time we need to predict the actual parameter. In this case, let's take it in the Berger's equation, the viscosity. And in this case, we have, um, well, basically we need to add one or depending on how many parameters we have, but in this case, we have only the viscosity. So we need to add one, the, the viscosity parameter to all other parameters that we are going to uh, optimize, to the optimizer. 
so usually what we do is we in any neural network as it goes as it get trained is we try to match the weight and biases uh, to match the this the 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 relation or the, the 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 things we are trying to predict so if we have in in let's say Berger's equation we have x and t and we are predicting u so we have two inputs one output and the uh, neural network in the pins situation it will have input of x will have input of, of t to the neural network and then the output of u and with the use of this network with the use of the physics that uh, loss we can calculate basically the loss generated by the pde or the physics of the problem and the loss generated by the data itself that's which is in in the pins location it's the input the initial condition boundary condition and of course, the, the BD, PDE loss is everything in between. It has to match the, uh, the, the, the PDE. In inverse pins, we have the data, not just for initial condition, boundary condition. We have the data for everything, including the domain. So now we have the, the, the whole solution. So if we have the whole solution, then what we can do is we can optimize the weights and biases and add another new parameter which is the viscosity we use the whole data to predict the loss or to reduce the loss one thing we have to also change is the loss of the pde we it has to be all these equation has to have um, a new which is the viscosity into them so the value of this viscosity is is going to be or the loss is going to be also affected by the value of the parameter. That's the, the only thing we have to do. We have to change a little bit the pins uh, network into inverse pins network, which in this time we are optimizing the viscosity as well as the neural network words and the biases, the weights and biases. And uh, that's it. That's, that's pretty much it. We have to have uh, just this uh, modification in order to make it work so how about the computation domain it's exactly the same as pins and actually it's not just exactly the same as pins it's exactly the same as the solution of the whole domain that you generate from another types of data if for example in piv it will be the piv data in if you have a matlab uh, this is a simulator it will be the result of the matlab simulator or the result of a normal let's say finite difference um, equ equ like um, solution so once we have this solution we can simply use it to train the neural network so what is the steps in order to do so the first thing we have to define the network once we define the network we put input the solution data and the solution data means everything initial condition boundary condition and domain everything uh, of course as, as as much as we have um, as, as much as we can and of course you don't have to uh, you don't have to have the solution as a mesh you just we need you need x we need t and we need u value the result once you start uh, training you need to make sure or uh, when you define the optimizer you need to make sure to add a new um parameter not just weight and biases but this time you need and to add the target value as part of the values that has to be optimized and regarding the loss function you also need to add the target value in the your pde to predict the pde loss once you do that you go to the training loop and you um, well finish the training you get the 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 best possible uh, solution with the least uh, possible loss and then you get out the results that you want so to wrap things up what is the difference between pins and inverse pins it's simply the same network or you can use the same network but you only have to add one parameter that the thing the parameter that you need to optimize not just weight and biases for the neural network but also the target parameter in this case then the viscosity and in the for the pde you need to change the uh, loss function to um, the pde loss function to have the 
this target parameter into it and that's it so this is uh, of course the, the last thing sorry for it is just the data in the pins you use initial condition boundary condition and some domain but it's it has to follow the the physics law uh, but in in inverse pins you use the data that is generated from another solver uh, because you cannot just rely on the PDE to predict something without, of course, you need that uh, new, that, that viscosity. Hope uh, this is uh, useful and uh, everybody kind of understood how inverse pins works and what is the main difference between pins and inverse uh, pins.